the very first episode shot of season six of the X Files was a, was a, an episode called Drive, and I wrote it. But uh, this first episode, Drive, uh, uh, had a bad guy, and it. it was kind of a two-hander. And I admit that I uh, I kind of was ripping off in a in a in a homagey way. I was uh, for inspiration. I was borrowing liberally from two things. I was borrowing from the movie Speed. Uh, and I was borrowing from a fantastic episode of television. This was a great show. Speaking of great shows, Homicide, Life on the Street. Uh, there was an amazing episode in which uh, uh, Vincent D'Onofrio gets uh, pushed in front of a subway train in Baltimore, and he gets caught between the the train uh, car and the and the track or the the whatever the hell it was, and he gets crushed. And as soon as they pull the train off him, they know he's going to die. He's going to go into seizure, and he's going to die. So basically. They're trying to. The cops are trying to find this uh, this character, uh, this this character's uh, wife, so he can say goodbye. Except the brilliant thing they did in this episode, the thing that stuck with me is the guy's an asshole. The guy really is unpleasant, and yet, at the end, you still have bonded with him, and you still feel sorry for him when they pull the train. You realize he's not just unpleasant because he's got a train on him. You realize he was that guy always, and yet you still feel his humanity and you still feel for him and you feel sorry for him. When the, so all of this to say, I love that episode of Homicide and I thought, I want to do this episode where it's Mulder and this bad guy in a car and this guy's going to die if they don't stop driving the car westward. The guy's head's going to explode because of this weird sympathetic vibration that's been set off in his head by some Navy top secret radio wave shit, you know, whatever. So, but I want this guy you know, I want us to sympathize with this guy, but I want to stack the deck a little harder against him. I want it just to be more challenging to write. I don't want him to be just be some nice poor schmuck who I'm going to feel sorry for when he dies at the end. I want him to want him to be an asshole. I want him to be a creep, and kind of a racist and kind of just unpleasant anti-Semite, yeah. kind of a creep. And yet, I still want to feel for him when he dies at the end of the hour. So all of this long-winded way of saying that uh, we hire. We, we're, we're looking for a guy to play this role, essentially a two-hander, our star and a guy in a car for 45 minutes. And we need a really good actor. And there's, luckily, we're here in Los Angeles. There's a lot of really good actors in Los Angeles. So we're auditioning folks. And we get some real good actors who can play the, the emotional stuff and who can be mean and nasty and scary, which this guy needs to be. But every actor who came in was kind of lacking something and it took me a while to figure out me and the other producers a while to figure out what it was and it was like you got to like this guy you got to sympathize with this not like him you don't need to like him but you need to nonetheless sympathize and feel empathy and and sorrow for him at the end of the hour how are you going to pull this off with a guy who's a just a creep who's accusing you know saying Mulder what is that a Jew name like kind of, so he's like a bastard this guy and yet you kind of got to sympathize with him we never saw an actor who could pull that off until, and I was getting nervous because the day was fast approaching. We needed to start shooting. And all of a sudden, uh, one day, uh, Rick Milliken, our, our casting uh, director, brings in Brian Cranston, who I'd never heard of. This was about a year and a half before Malcolm in the Middle went on the so air. Before the it was before Malcolm in the Middle. And, uh, and Brian comes in, and he just nails it. He just, he's like, as soon as he's uh, done, as soon as he walks out, we're shaking his hand, and I'd look to the other guys and said, OTW, which, off to wardrobe. That's what you say when you essentially, like, that was the guy, let's stop looking now. Let's just sign him up. He was fantastic. He had everything we needed. He was scary. He was a fantastic, dramatic actor, and yet he had some, some humanity that kind of came through, as, leaked out of his pores or came out of his eyes. I don't know what it was that... He committed completely to the to the nastiness, the anti-Semitic nature of the character, the racism, the just the hillbilly Peckerwood kind of creepiness of the character. He committed 110 percent, and yet also he beamed out this kind of I don't know if he's even aware how he does it, but he he was nonetheless sympathizable.